Thank you, Brother Johnny. Now, when I think about 36 hours, just, just think of it right now. Here it is, it's almost 11 o'clock. Go back 24 and add another 12 to it. 36 hours. There was a man who left Cape Town, South Africa. 36 hours later, or thereabouts, with the layovers, the stopovers, whatever you call them. He finally arrived in New York. And that's been a number of weeks ago. But the thing about it is this, when a man uses his feet to go into the world and take the message of God to the people who are waiting for him, it is remarkable to say the least. Because the man, he has so many hours of life in the time that he is here on earth. And how he uses those hours, he can use them for himself and his family, or he, he can also use them to benefit other people around the world. This is a man that we have in our, in our pulpit today. He's not a stranger to any of us. All of us know him. All of us have been impacted and influenced by him in the words that he shares with us in either a teaching or preaching form. And so today, I present to you the man of God, apostle, brother, evangelist a little bit, and pastor, teacher, and friends, our friend, the man of God who has the message of God for this day. Pastor Andreas, come. We will receive in the heart. We will receive an offering for you that the return of this message is fully done. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yes, sir. Yes. I've noticed that uh, Apostle Pat caught the message this <laughs> And we need to get our minds and our body in alignment yes, sir. with our spirits and with the word of God. When something is out of alignment, it's very painful. And so we praise God for what he's doing through his word. Uh, I believe that God is aligning the body of Christ yeah. for great things. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So this morning, I want to teach once again because part of my, or primary part of my ministry is teaching. And it is my purpose this morning to impart to you some spiritual understanding concerning the law of increase that will help to establish you because that's what understanding does. It establishes us in the word and it establishes us in the faith. So I believe that we need to gain understanding that any kind of increase in our lives, whether it be God's presence, whether it be His blessing, financial advancement, increase in our joy, increase in our peace, increase in whatever area that we desire, we need to understand that it doesn't happen automatically. Amen? Amen? All of these things concerning increase are governed by a law. Yes. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about, the law of increase. How many of you want increase? Yes. Increase in love, increase in joy, yes. increase in your peace, yes. increase in your health, increase in your finances. I mean, we all desire increase, don't we? increase in the presence of God and in His involvement in our daily lives. All of us desire that, don't we? Yes. So we need to understand that that increase is governed by spiritual law. Amen. And we need to know what that law is and so that we can actively engage with the law of increase. You see, the law, the thing with the law is it only works when you put it to work. 
Amen. Amen. So we need to know what that law is and engage with it before we see the increase that we desire in our lives. Jesus explained to us what governs increase. And I'm going to share it with you. And how this law can be applied in our lives according to what the Lord said in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 24 and 25. What I'm, just, what I'm going to read to you here, I'm going to read from the Amplified Translation. These two verses govern the law of increase. And we need to study them, meditate on them, because the more you meditate on the Word of God, yes. the more you receive. Yes. That's what meditation does. You don't just read the Word. That's right. You meditate in it. You ponder on it. Amen. You ask questions. Yes. And you ask, how does this apply to me? How do I relate to this? That's what meditation does. Here we go. Jesus is speaking and he said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. Verse 25, for to him who has will more be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away by force. Interesting. How can you take away from him that has nothing? Well, we'll explain in a moment. Jesus said that it's the way we hear and the way we receive the Word of God that determines the blessing we receive from Him. I'm going to say that again because this is very important. The way you hear and the way you receive the Word of God that you hear determines the blessing that you receive from the Word. If we hear the Word and receive that Word with honor, mixed with faith, we will receive the blessing and the virtue that is locked up in the Word that we hear. You see, the attitude of our hearts by which we approach the Word, by which we receive the Word, determines what we hear and receive from the Word. Everything has to do with our attitude. If we hear and receive the Word with honor, with faith, then virtue and knowledge will be unlocked from that word and be imparted to us. Our attitude, the way we respond to what we hear. The measure of blessing, the measure of faith, the measure of grace and power that I enjoy or you enjoy and experience at this stage of my life is proportionate to the measure of honor, respect, and obedience I have given to the word I have heard so far and received. Amen. Yes. Amen. Same with you. Amen. You can't receive any more than what you have honored, obeyed, and practiced Amen. of the word in your life. And so if I desire to receive an increase in whichever area increase of blessing, increase of His presence, then I need to give greater honor, greater obedience to the Word that is given to me by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. 
That's right. Because that's how it comes. Yes. Anything that you and I receive, it comes from the Word. Yes. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Healing, deliverance, mm -hmm. health, love, joy, peace is all found in the Word of God. Yes. We don't need any more than the Word. That's right. And the Word has already been given to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I can have as much of God as I want. You can have as much of God as you want. Yes. Amen? Yes. There is no limit to what we can receive from God in terms of His grace. The only limits we have are the ones we place on ourselves. Amen. God places no limits. But we place limits yes. on how much we receive. Yes. How far we desire to go. How far do we desire to press into God's presence. We put those limits on ourselves, Amen. not God. Amen. Sometimes with our wrong thinking. I'm renewed my... <coughs> Amen? Amen. So... Out of the four grounds in the parable of the sower sowing the seed. Out of the four grounds the seed fell on in the parable, only one produced fruit. The others failed to produce any harvest. You read those parables many times. You're familiar with it. Now, there was nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the sower that sows the word. The Bible says the seed is the incorruptible seed of the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. There's no problem with the seed. There's no problem with the sower. Amen? Amen. The problem is with the state and the condition of our hearts. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we've got to look to where the problem really is. No problem with God. God is not our problem. No problem with the Word. The problem is with the state and the condition our hearts are in. If our hearts are tender and free from contaminating influence of the world, then the Word we receive will bring forth fruit. Jesus said, 30, 60 and a hundredfold return. Amen. Amen. Yes. Jesus also said, listen to this, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. <laughs> and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you again. In other words, when we hear the Word of God ministered to us by the Spirit, how do you judge it? How do you receive it? Do we judge it worthy of honor? Worthy of our obedience? Or do we judge it as another word that is common, familiar? Yes, I know, I know what the word says, Pastor, but, but, you don't understand my situation. You don't understand how I feel and right. renegade the word of God. That's right. Do you see that? You see, how do we judge it? How do we measure it? Right. When you hear the word, how do you measure it? Because the way you measure it, it will be measured back to you. The way you judge it, it will be judged. In other words, <laughs> the way we measure it or judge it, it will be the measure the Word will judge us. Either worthy of the blessing or unworthy of the blessing that it contains in you. Amen. Simple, isn't it? Amen. Amen. When you hear the word of the Lord saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, you are mine. How do you hear that? How do you yeah. judge it? How do you receive it? Do you say, wow, 
Hallelujah. The creator of heaven and earth says, He loves me with an everlasting love. I am His and He is mine. Hallelujah. Is that how you receive it? Is that how you hear it? Or do you still continue to fear and worry and be stressed out? That means the word you heard is not doing anything for you because you haven't received it with faith and wow and honor. Amen. Amen. Folks, we we got to get back to giving honor to the word of God. Yes. Yes. Giving the word first place in our lives. Amen. Yes. But so often we take the opinions of other people. We take the words of other people and we place them higher. We believe them more readily than we believe the word of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Again, when you hear the word, when God says to you, fear not, for I'm with you. Do you still fear? That means you haven't heard the word. You haven't honored it. You haven't respected the word to the degree where fear loses its power over you. It says, fear not. Why? And he tells us why. He says, because I'm with you. You don't need to fear. You don't need to stress out. Why? Because I'm with you. And I will never leave you or forsake you. Remember who's speaking here. Amen. Amen. It says, for I am your God. Hallelujah. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Glory to God. God is my helper. Yes. He helps me. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And he says, what I've called you to do, you're not going to do it on your own. I will help you do it. Amen. Well, if the Lord is my helper, what do I need to worry about? Why do I need to stress? Right. He says, I'm going to help you. Glory to God. Amen. And then he goes on to say, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, let me ask you a question. How do you hear these words? And how do you respond to these words? How do you judge them? Do you judge these words as honorable, as worthy of your faith in them, as worthy of your obedience? The way you judge the word you hear, the word will judge you whether you are worthy of the blessing that the word carries. Amen. If we receive them with, wow, you know what? I was in fellowship with the Lord yesterday. You know what he said to me? He said, he's my helper. Is that how we talk to each other? Or do we talk about our problems and our fears and our sickness and our diseases and what this news channel said and what this news channel said and what the devil is doing? So many times we glorify the works of the devil rather than the works of God. I don't care what the enemy is trying to do with our kids. My God is greater. Amen. 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 And my children and grandchildren up to the fourth generation, they will be blessed no matter what this world tries to do to them. That's right. Amen. Amen. I will not fear what the enemy is doing. Amen. So many of you are talking about the devil's works rather than speaking the word of God and what God is doing in your nation. That's right. That's it. That's right. And I'll tell you this, God is realigning your nation to his purposes. Yes, sir. That's right. Don't be influenced by what you naturally see behind the scenes. The angels of God 
The Word of God, the men of God are at work bringing about God's kingdom, God's purposes in life. So stop talking about what the devil is doing. Yeah, that's right. And giving him credit. He's a defeated foe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. The blessing. The blessing resides in the attitude of the hearer. Yes. Not this ears. This ears deep down here. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. You gotta guard your heart and your mind. Amen. Just like faith comes by hearing the word, unbelief also comes by hearing anything That's that is right. contrary to the Word of God. Right. Don't let people spew their unbelief on you. That's Stop right. it right there. That's Reject right. it. Amen. Amen. This Amen. world is baptized in unbelief. They will make you sick when you're healthy. That's right. <laughs> Amen. They will tell you when, you, when you're over your 40s, That's man, right. you started decaying and you're going and, 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 and you're getting... Don't accept that garbage. Amen. 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 In Mark 4, 24, Jesus revealed to us the law of increase. And he said, for whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Whoever has, to him will be given. Has what? Whoever has what? I need to know what Jesus is talking about here. Because if I don't understand what he's saying, then I'm not going to receive the blessing. Whoever has, listen to this, ears that hear, eyes that see, and a heart that understands. Whoever has ears to hear, yes. eyes to see, a heart that understands will more be given. Hallelujah. And to him who has no ears to hear, no eyes to see, and a heart that is dulled, even that which he has, will be taken away by force. Who's going to take it away? The devil. Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. Do you see that? Yes. Amen. This spiritual law of increase, hear good, you may want to write this down, is governed. The law of increase is governed by hearing ears, seeing eyes, and understanding hearts. <coughs> Amen. Amen. That's what we desperately need. Eyes that see and perceive. And he's not talking about physical sight. Right. right. He's not talking about physical hearing. I mean, everybody has ears on their heads. Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. He wasn't referring to natural hearing. Right. He was referring to spiritual yes. hearing deep down in our spirits in our hearts. That's where we measure the word. That's where we receive the word with honor and act upon it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, Jesus referring to spiritually blind and deaf people quoted Isaiah saying, and I'm reading from Matthew 13, verse 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull the ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with the hearts, and turn, and turn, change the way they think, so that I should heal them. You see, Healing is governed also by another law. The law of being able to hear the word. To see the word. And to understand Amen. the word. Amen. These folks could not receive anything from God because 
even though they had eyes, they could not perceive, they could not understand. You can shout all you want to. Amen? Yeah, if yeah. a person is deaf, he won't right. hear, he won't receive anything. That's right. And I tell you this, we have many deaf people in the church. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen? Many, many spiritually dull people. They cannot discern spiritual things. That's right. The only thing they discern is natural things. How they feel, what they see, what they taste, what they smell. That's what the Bible calls carnal Christians. They govern by their physical senses. And it's a major problem in the church today. Major, major problem. When you are governed by your physical, natural senses, you are carnal. You still obey. Yes, when you die, you go to heaven, you go in the Lord's presence, but you've got to live your life here defeated. Right. Miserable. Yes. Unhappy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> what is the God. definition of a dull heart? I'll give it to you. It is a heart that has become hard towards God, callous, insensitive, unresponsive to spiritual things, incapable of receiving where spiritual things are concerned. That is a dull heart. Now, and people who have allowed their hearts to grow dull or hard through unbelief are unreachable. God cannot reach them. You cannot reach them. Amen. The Word cannot reach them. Because they are spiritually asleep. Hello? Amen. So often you will hear in the scripture says, Arise, you who sleep. Yes. Christ will give you light. Arise and shine. The light comes only when you are spiritually awakened. Amen? Amen. Amen. Scripture says that if they ever wake up from their spiritual slumber, and see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, God will heal them. <coughs> so you see here from the word that healing, deliverance, increase, blessing must be accompanied with spiritual sight, spiritual hearing, an understanding heart which produces genuine repentance. Right. Yes. Amen. 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 <coughs> Praise God. Let me give you an example. Just to bring it home. Jesus in his hometown. You know the story? Matthew chapter 6. I think Mark chapter 6. And Matthew as well records it. He visits his home hometown in Nazareth, full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, and power to minister healing to the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, yet not one blind person received the sight, not one person was delivered, no one person was healed. Why? The Bible says he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. When we speak about heart and heart and speaking about unbelief, it's one and the same thing. And most times, it's not that we have a problem with our faith. It's not our faith that's a problem. It's our unbelief that negates our faith. Amen? Now, because Jesus, the Bible says, was not received with honor, and he was not received with, with true spiritual recognition. They didn't recognize who he was. They just saw an ordinary carpenter. Is not this the son of Joseph? Right. You see, spiritual recognition has everything to do with the way you will receive the blessing. Yes. Yes. Yes, if you receive a man of God as just as an ordinary human being, without discerning spiritually who that man is, right. what he carries, you're not going to receive anything right. from him. Right. Amen. Right. If you don't honor the man of God whom God sends into your life, 
you're going to receive absolutely nothing from that. Amen. Because honor is the key that unlocks your heart to receive what he carries. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. Good. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is so true. Amen. Yes. It is. Yes. But if you don't spiritually recognize those men that God specifically sends and anoints and sends them to you in order to equip you, in order to bless you, if you don't recognize them, you're not going to receive anything That's from right. them. That's right. That's right. You see, so often we get familiar. You know, people get familiar. Eh? Being a pastor and hearing me every Sunday, they get so accustomed to hearing my voice. That's why I like to get away often. <laughs> it does me good and it does them good as well. When they hear you every Sunday and they hear the same voice and the same tone of voice, they become so familiar. They lose sight of the spiritual recognition. Amen. 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 This is so true. That's why when a man of God goes out of his base, a stronger anointing comes on him, not because the people are more receptive to him yeah. far away than Amen. they are those that are in his own town. Yes. A prophet is not without honor except in his own, <laughs> in his own family. You know where I'm most dishonored? In my own family. I don't say that in a bad way. Why? Because my wife sees my weaknesses and my humanity and my faults and my... Hello. It takes more faith on her part than any one of you because you don't know my humanity. You don't know how difficult I am. But she knows. You see, the, these, these Nazarenes, they, they saw Jesus as an ordinary human being. He, he's, this is the carpenter that made my table and my chairs that are sitting in my kitchen. And then his father and mother, Joseph and Mary, and here are his sisters. What's he talking about? I am anointed to bring healing and deliverance to you. They didn't receive him with honor. They didn't recognize who he was, and as a result, they didn't receive anything from him. Even though he was loaded with healing, loaded with deliverance, loaded with the blessing of God. Not one of them got healed. Not one of them had their eyes open. And I'm sure there were many blind people and many sick people and many demoniacs, but he could not do anything because of their unbelief. The same thing is happening within our churches today. Folks. Hello. He was treated with familiarity and disrespect because the hearts were hardened and dull. They heard what he said. Everybody heard what he said, but they didn't understand. It. They saw, but they did not perceive. You see? And because of the hardness of the heart, they missed the hour of the visitation. I wonder how many of us have missed an hour of our visitation when the Lord Jesus visited us, but because we didn't like the package he was wrapped in, we didn't just, we just didn't recognize it. And we remained without. Amen. Amen. In response to their unbelief and hardness of heart, Jesus gave them two examples from the Old Covenant. Here they are. And he said, You will undoubtedly quote me this proverb saying, Physician, heal thyself, meaning, do miracles here in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Certainly, there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. 
And many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha. But the only one healed was Naaman, a foreigner, a Syrian. Just like Elijah could not help or minister to any widow in Israel, though there were many in need, or Elisha could not heal any leper, even though there were many lepers among God's people, even so Jesus could not do any miracles in among his own people in his own country because of the hardness of the heart and which was full of unbelief. Hello. Nothing wrong with the word. That's right. Nothing That's right. wrong with the messenger. It's the ground. It's the heart of the individual you minister to. And I've seen it over and over and over again through the many years that I've been ministering to people. The same word I give to the one, he receives it, and you can see the blessing of the Lord evident in the lives. The same word, the other person hears it, That's right. That's real. but they Amen. do not receive it. They hear, but they do not receive it. That's right. They do not act on it. One is blessed, other one is not blessed. Right. And when you look at it on the surface, you think, well, is God's favoring. God blesses one, but he doesn't bless him yet. No, that's not the case. God's grace is the same towards everyone. It's the way you respond to what you hear. It's the way you receive the man of God. And honor, let me tell you this. Honor is not just lip service. That's right. Oh, what a word. I honor this word. My, wow. And you walk out of the church, you forgot what you preached. <laughs> honor is more than just words. Yes. It carries action. Yes. And most often, financial action. Yes. You honor the man of God. You respect him, and you honor him financially as well. In our church, we have what we call first fruits. Every person that I personally mentor and father practices first fruits. First fruits is given to spiritual fatherhood. And first fruits is not tithes. I'm sure right. Pastor Jim has taught you this. My sons and my daughters make me a wealthy man that I can trouble the world and I owe it all to them. They few, but man, they know how to honor. Amen. Some of them are sitting here today. I value them. I love them. They value me. They value my ministry. And they don't just say, we honor you, we value you. No, they put their hands in the pocket. Deep. Amen. Amen. I wasn't meaning to talk about this, but I think it needs to be said. Let us not love in word only, but in deed and in truth. You honor the man of God in your life, see to it that you support him. See to it that you honor them financially as well. Amen. 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 And so even today, God is with us. His all-powerful word has been sent to us to heal, to deliver us. Yet many of us remain in bondage. And you know why? It's the heart. Amen. The heart. The heart of his people has grown down. It's the heart. <clears throat> How often Jesus rebuked his disciples? More than once. I mean, they walked with him. They saw the miracles of the five loaves and the two fish and then the seven loaves. He fed thousands. They saw the dead being raised and yet the hearts were dull. You see, miracles do not soften the heart. Only the word when it is received yes. with honor, yes. it will break the stony heart. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. In Mark 16, verse 14, we read, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief 
and the hardness of heart because they did not believe the report that was given to them who had seen him after he had risen. They still carried hardness of heart, unbelief. And again, after the feeding of the 5,000 just men in Mark 8, 16, Jesus says to them, Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do you not see? Having ears you do not hear? Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? And how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. Also when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, Seven. So he said to them, How is it that you still do not understand? They were reasoning among themselves. We have no bread. How often you reason among yourself, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to deal with this crisis or with this challenge? And on and on and on we go. Why? That, that is a clear <coughs> evidence that you still carry a heart and heart. That's why Jesus said, how is it that you don't understand? In the book of Proverbs, we are cautioned and warned to take all diligence in guarding our hearts. Yes. For out of our spirit man flow the issues of life. You gotta guard your heart. You gotta guard what you see. You gotta guard what you hear. Right. And I mentioned to you, this world is baptized in unbelief. All you need to do is just walk in this world, turn on the television, yeah. And man, they will spew so much unbelief that if you do not guard your ears, your eyes, and your heart, you will not realize before you realize that your heart is hard. That's right. Why? Because, listen to this, what you focus on, you become sensitive to. Yes. What you neglect to focus on and meditate on, you become hard towards it. So if we spend all of our time listening to the junk that the world spews on us, I mean, I've been watching the television while I'm here. I am shocked at the amount of drugs they advertise. I told you, even if you're healthy, they'll make you sick. I mean, they're coming at you all the time. And if we want to be a people of faith, strong people of faith, we're going to have to live lives that is different from the average Christian. That's right. Yes. We're going to have to right. unplug from the filth of this world yes. because it hardens our hearts. It's designed to harden your heart. That's right. Without even trying. <coughs> Proverbs 4:23. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Jesus said in Luke 21, Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, too much eating, too much drinking, too much cares, the cares of this life that that day come on you unexpectedly. And again, Mark 4, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the pursuit or the desires for other things entering in, what do they do? They choke the very life of God within us. And we become unfruitful. The word becomes unfruitful. You see, your heart is like a garden. You neglect your garden for a few days, it's filled with weeds. <laughs> You're going to have to learn how to weed your heart. Keep it. Keep it free from this contamination. Yes. Keep it free from fear. Keep it free from unbelief and doubt. Keep it free from worldly entertainment that does nothing but hardens our hearts. Right. Amen. That is why I said if we want to be a people of great faith, we're going to have to live lives that is different from an average Christian. Amen. 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 Praise God. 
The scriptures have so much to say about being watchful in prayer. Fellowship with God. Fellowship with the Word. Not doze off to sleep. Amen? Amen. Scripture says you are all sons of light. Amen? Amen. You are a son and a daughter of light. Yes. Sons of the day, not of the night. Therefore, let us not do what? Sleep. Amen. It's talking about spiritual sleep. Yes, right. Let us be alert. Yes, Let us be awake. Let us be responsive. Yes. Ever ready to hear the voice of the Lord. Ever ready to respond to His word. Yes. Ever ready. You see, if you are sensitive to God, when you walk around, you will detect needs that have your name on it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You will see. You will discern. You will pick up the other yes. person's heart. Yes. And sometimes all the other person needs is just the word of encouragement. Amen. Sometimes when I'm in the services and I, I pick up certain things and all I need to do is just give them a hug. Right. That's all they need. Yep. I remember one day I was uh, preaching in, in one of the churches in Cyprus and there was a lady that came forward. I didn't know her. I've never seen her before. So the Lord said, don't pray for her. Just give her a hug. Later on, she testified, when you had me, she said, something fell off of me. And I have never felt the way I felt. But we got to carry the heart of the Father yeah, yes. yes. that is amen. picking up needs. Amen. I mean, you can't meet every need. But there are certain needs that have your name yep. on it. Yes. And only you can meet that need. Whether that need is emotional, whether that need is spiritual, whether that need is is financial. Amen? Amen? Oftentimes I would pick up a need of those that I relate to. They have a need, a financial need. They don't have to tell me, I know. Amen? And that's what God wants us to be able to carry a heart that is so responsive and so sensitive to His Hallelujah. love and to His Spirit that we move and walk by the Spirit yeah. rather than yes, by what yes, we yes. see in the yes. natural. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Sometimes one word of encouragement can make such a difference in yes, a person's sir. life. Yes, yes, sir. Praise God. He said, let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation. And again, Paul, by the Spirit of God, exhorts us in the letter to the Romans. He says, Romans 13, 11, and do this knowing the time. A sensitive, a spiritually sensitive person knows the time and the season that we are living in. And he knows what he ought to do at the right time, yes. in the right place, yes. being found in the right place at the right time. Yes, sir. Why? Because they are spiritually awakened and alert. For now, he says, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. How alert are we? How sensitive are we? What's your heart like? You know, this cannot be solved by a simple prayer from anyone. I wish I could do that, lay my hands and, and you know, and I would have done that for myself, little bit. <laughs> And all of a sudden, your heart is softened and it sinks. No, it's a lifestyle change. Yes. We're going to have to change our lifestyles. Amen? Yes. We're going to have to guard our minds, yes, sir. what yes. we see, what yes. we hear. Because your eyes and your ears are the gates to your mind and then to your heart. And as, as, as Pat said this morning, we need to have a renewed mind. Right. We need to dig deep into the Word of God and study the Word, become diligent students of the Word of God and meditate in the Word day and night. Amen. Focus and meditate on the things of God, on what God does, not what the devil does. Right. Right. Shut the world right. out, yeah. pull the plug out, and That's just it. plug into the Word and to His Spirit. That way, we become giants of faith. Amen. And we will see great things. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So remember, when you leave this place today, honor the word. Honor the men and the women that bring you the word. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I love the blessing that is within the word. Praise God. Let us pray. Can we stand, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word, Lord. How precious is your word. How honorable is your word. You have set your word, your word declares above your name. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for our lack of honor, our lack of respect, our lack of obedience that we have given to the word. We have honored at times the word of men more than we've honored your word. For that today we repent and we ask you to forgive us. Teach us to value what is truly valuable. To honor what is truly honorable. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.